Let me give an example. His question is, he conveyed his real estate title to an LLC, sold it. The LLC got the money, probably got, it's going to get a 1099. He then did something else. He reallocated the cash. Now, receiving the cash is considered income. And let's just say it's taxable. Let's just, just say it's taxable. Fine. But that doesn't mean he has to do anything with it. it it's just there. It, it's not a gain. And the taxable aspect of the LLC receiving this money, even though it gets a 1099 and it has an EIN and all these things, okay? And maybe he's the owner of it. The fact is that the taxable gain the LLC received is deferred. How long is it deferred? You decide. Whoever's running the LLC gets to determine this. It goes from year to year, back to back, okay? The deferral period ends, let's just say, December 31st, and then it resumes the moment later, okay, January 1st. You, it's always been that way. I don't know that it would ever change because the system is based on that. So as long as you don't claim a tax liability, as long as the LLC doesn't file a return, it's not going to have an, a, the um, requirement to pay a portion of the dollars. The dollars are being taxed, not the real estate. So the, the, the disposition of the property that turns into dollars, okay, could normally be taxed. So if I got the money, sure, I'm, I'm on the hook for that, you or me. But if the LLC got the money and it never files a return, it never has, it has to have never filed a return though, then it's not going to have that tax liability. So it doesn't matter what you do with it. You said you bought precious metals with it, great. You can say whatever you want about the precious metals. There's no title on that. If you go to sell the precious metals for dollars, make sure that if you don't want to pay the tax on it, make sure that you tell whoever's buying it, if he's going to give you a 1099, make sure the LLC is the one selling it, right? If, you're, if you have a vault service holding the precious metals, make sure the account holder is your LLC with an EIN, right? And to make sure that they're going to account for it properly, because they might ask you for an SSN and your ID and things of that nature, give them a W-9 showing box one, the LLC name, skip box two, show it as a, lim a, um, a an LLC, that's a partnership. The EIN or the W-9 classification does not change what your company is, okay? It's a holding company. It's always going to be that way because it's how you're treating it. It's not how you're filling out forms. So yeah, I mean, I know that's a lot more information, but you got it figured out right, Stephen. This is, there's no tax on it. It's always deferred. Yeah, it could be taxable. The IRS taxes everything. So who cares if it tax the trust? Bring it. Change the rates. Describe what you're taxing. I will simply continue doing what I'm doing because I'm, I don't need a structure, an entity that's going to get me out of the tax. If you understand, the LLC is not the entity that's getting you out of the tax. It's not. You're using the LLC to change your property rights so that you don't have the tax liability. I have to give this example again. I filed 1040s before. I think I filed nine before I stopped. Uh, if I have a 1099, they're going to ask me, IRS, hey, where have you been for 30 something years? Okay. In order for me to avoid that, I simply do business through a limited liability company. So there's two things going on. One is my tax treatment. So if I don't claim that money and I, my LLC doesn't file a return, no problem there. But it's not the best situation because I'm still the owner and technically, eh, I'm the beneficial owner and I got the money. And so, I mean, I don't know that I have a problem with that. So here's how to make it real clean and clear. Is if I have, let's say my brother who doesn't care anything about what I do, I have him be the owner of the company with me. So he and I together, we don't have any joint liability. We don't file joint tax returns. We don't sign commercial lease agreements. We haven't been sued together. We don't do anything together. So that's perfect. So I have him own the company with me. So what that means is we have a new person that's never existed before, that's not a taxpayer, that owns the LLC. The LLC is the conduit. So I change my property rights by divesting my exclusive right to benefit from the money. And I put that, those rights into the group of myself and my brother. It doesn't matter what else follows. The fact is, my brother and I are not a taxpayer. You could think of it like we're aliens, right, from another planet. We are immune from the tax simply because we simply changed our, our property rights. So I cannot have a gain and he cannot have a gain. And together, check this out, we together cannot have a gain because we're not a taxpayer. <laughs> Tell me, th there's no way they can argue. Whenever I explain this to a CPA that you can, you can see the wheels turning and then there's like this silence and they're like, oh, I never thought of it that way before. Almost every time in any country, 
in any country. I've talked, I've spoken with Canada, Australia, England, at least those countries, CPAs. They're all the same. They're not stupid. It's just that they're they don't think. They're not thinking. The liability goes to the person who's the taxpayer with the particular rights. And they didn't think when they created this system, they didn't think that somebody could come up with the idea to share those rights. I mean, that's what a corporation does, right? A corporation shares its liability. It passes off liability. Well, how does it do that? The corporation passes off liability. You guys don't even think about this. Okay, so the stock market, <laughs> the stock market is a way for corporations to pass off their liability onto you and me. But they don't just do that to us. They do that to our pension funds. It's very slick. It's a way to pass off risk. And yeah, you can make money with it because you want to take on risk and you get a return for that. But at the same time, who, who takes the hit when the company fails? The stockholders and the people that know what's happening, they're at the top, let's say, they're the majority holders and they know what to do. They're not going to tell us. They're not going to tell, you know, speak outside their, their circle. 